a way for teachers to opt out of the public pension plan or maybe just allow the whole system to be revamped to a private defined contribution system. And something that's probably related is uh, you talked about education funding and keeping funds for schools with best practices. What exactly are those and what about schools that can't meet those due to size and location and budget? Okay, well, let me cover two or three of those topics together. Because one of the challenges was we had to deal with a fairly significant budget deficit this year, about a billion and a half dollars. And one of the things we did is we actually did a two-year budget um, for the first time in terms of doing projections. And so what we did in terms of doing that, that really helped our decision-making to say, we're looking at the long-term, just not the short-term. But in the short-term, we're going to have to make some cuts. But if you look at what we showed for 2013, we're done with those cuts. Because in particular, we hit colleges and universities pretty hard. And <laughs> so there may be a question in there that's loaded at some point. <laughs> um, but we did it in a fashion of just being open about it to say, if we can get through 2012 with a reasonable economic <coughs> forecast, we're hopefully moving in a positive way now. And we can look at reinvesting in education and other fields the right way. By, being efficient, by also being efficient by our taxpayers. So a lot of that is, let's create an environment for success there so we can reinvest, but we're going to do it based on best practice principles. So again, it's not just about sending money to people. It's about asking people to step up and show best practice. And so for local jurisdictions, we started it this year for the revenue sharing dollars. They had to show better accountability and transparency by putting information up on the web, a dashboard. Um, there are some reforms on benefits, about pension plans and medical cost sharing, and the other one is about service consolidation and service sharing, about partnering together with surrounding communities or with the state for local jurisdictions. For the education community, for K-12, through for future years, for increases, we're going to be putting in some criteria about performance, about student growth, to say we're going to reward jurisdictions, districts that really focus on student growth, because it should have some merit on that. And then for teachers, actually I want to create opportunities for teachers to reward the best teachers. Because we will talk about pension plans, reforms, getting the defined contribution for teachers, for most public sector people at some point. We need to. But for teachers, for example, to the degree they feel threatened, we're also trying to be proactive to reward success. So one thing in my special education message, we talked about creating a master teacher category, a new classification where we can pay the best teachers even more money. And what do I mean by that? Too often, if you look at fields with teachers and such, if they want to go up the income ladder in some ways, they feel compelled to go into administration. And so yet we take our very best teachers and sometimes they end up leaving teaching to go be a principal. This was to actually say how they could continue being a teacher, but a teacher responsible for helping other teachers. To really create an environment to keep them doing it, what they do best, but give them more tools.